Hey, everybody. I'm Jesse, and I don't have anyone else with me. And this is Boring Conversation. Welcome to Boring Conversation, a Malifaux podcast. Jesse here with a quick solo episode. I uh, wanted to come at you with a couple of quick channel updates, plugs for Captain Con 2024, and our brand new Patreon. So, getting right into it, uh, first and foremost, we have Captain Con coming up on February 2nd, Friday through Sunday, February 4th of 2024. It's going to be held at the Crown Plaza in Warwick, Rhode Island. Uh, you can go right to CaptainCon.com for uh, co convention details. Uh, their room block is open currently, and I believe the room rate is $140, uh, which is pretty darn good. Uh, one quick note, if you're planning on coming in on Thursday night, Thursday is not a part of the group block, so what you'd probably want to do is actually call the hotel, share the uh convention name Captain Con and the uh, discount code CON, C-O-N, with them. Let them know that you'd like to book a uh, gr uh, group rate for Friday and Saturday night, and then the best available rate that they have for Thursday night. That's what I did myself, as I am planning on being there Thursday night. So uh, for anybody who hasn't traveled to Captain Con before, it's pretty nice in that it's only about 10 minutes from the airport, and there's actually a free airport shuttle that goes right to the hotel. So there's no need for you to get an Uber or do a ride share or anything like that. Uh, there's also going to be plenty of activities running during all hours of the con. I mean, they have everything from workshops and panels and demos, other competitive and non-competitive events for everything from board games to tabletop games to role-playing games to, I mean, I think they even have like rum tastings and there's all sorts of cool stuff going on. Uh, in addition to the Malifaux content, you really shouldn't have any trouble at all planning out your time. Uh, weekend badges run $65 for the entirety of the con Friday through Sunday. If you're only planning on attending Saturday and Sunday, then the badge is only $55. Uh, Booty and Plunder, the 50, souls, 50 Soul Stone Gaining Grounds 4 event that I'm going to be running, does have a $20 ticket fee. Uh, that ticket fee is partially to help pay for the space for some of the larger events that they have at the con. They do require uh, ticket fees because they have to, you know, basically rent out additional rooms to cover them. Uh, and then a portion of that ticket fee is also going to go into event support. Uh, this particular year, uh, we have it set up such that I'm going to get a portion of the proceeds for each ticket sale for that event. And that's going to help to cover some of the in incidental costs uh, that have been incurred, such as Oh, well, we'll get to that in a minute. But long story short, we're going to be getting a significant amount of prize support from some of our sponsors. Uh, I've been contacted by some several of the sponsors that we've had in years past, and we'll be reaching out to the remainder of them this uh, probably this weekend, to be perfectly honest. Um, the registration and purchasing of your event tickets is extremely important for helping the convention plan their space and it also helps them plan on the amount of event support that they're going to be able to provide to us uh, if you actually uh, purchase your ticket before the end of november which today is the 26th if you purchase it before the end of this week by friday the second uh, that will help tremendously because it'll actually allow them to budget additional support for our event uh, on Monday the 4th, they actually do a tally of all the event tickets sold. And at that time, they can determine kind of preliminarily what amount of uh, price support they're going to be able to provide, what portion of those ticket fees are going to be provided to uh, me as the event organizer to cover some of the incidentals, and kind of helps them finalize the space that they end up assigning us to, because there are a number of rooms uh, that they can put us in depending on the size of the event. So... If you are planning on attending, 
please, please, please consider purchasing your ticket before the end of this week. Uh, Cut off time Saturday the 2nd. I think that if you purchase them Sunday the 3rd, they still count because they don't do the tally until Monday. But hey, you know what? Let's not push it. Let's let's plan for Saturday the 2nd. Uh, There's going to be a link in the show notes as well as some of the social posts that go along with this release uh, to the room block and to the um, event details page where you can purchase your badge and your event tickets. Preliminarily, uh, we're really looking at both the Malifaux Content Creators Invitational. Uh, that's the MCCI. Of course, you've probably heard everybody, you know, me and a number of other folks talk about this already for this year and in years past. Uh, essentially, what it is is an invitation only event for two person teams of content creators from all across the Maliverse. So that's going to include podcasts, YouTube channels blogs and the like um there's going to be folks that really do pretty much only Malifaux content like this channel and and a few others plus there's going to be some there that have uh, um, produced content in addition to Malifaux for some other tabletop games board games so on and so forth uh last year we had i believe 10 teams and i would really love it if we could get all the way up to the 14 team cap for this year Um, Anybody who does play in the Malifaux Content Creators Invitational on Friday the 2nd is most likely also going to be playing in the open event on the uh, Saturday and Sunday, which is going to be a five round 50 soul stone gaining ground season four. Yes, you heard it right, folks. Season four. We have it. Um, Tournament. That was kind of awkward. Whatever. Anyway. Uh, This tournament, I haven't finalized the pools or the rulings for it just yet. I'm going to be doing that probably within the next week or two here. You can expect final pools to be posted by the end of December once I get a chance to get a couple more games of Gaining Ground Season 4 and get a feel for what the strategies and schemes look like. Um, I've done a lot of sort of deliberating on what some of the optional rules I might implement for this particular set of events will be. Um, the Lone Star Fodown was a, a significant source of uh, information for me and being able to participate in that, plus the Nova Open this year, really gave me a lot to think on. Uh, one of the things that I am going to be doing at this point, I'm pretty positive that we're going to be doing uh, open hiring uh, with bands one as the only um, special rule. Uh, it's not going to be singles. It's not going to be limited. Um, but we are probably going to be doing bands. Uh, I know that there's a lot of feelings on both sides. Um, going into the foe down, I was actually staunchly opposed to bands. Uh, the more that I've kind of thought about it and the more games that I've played, the more I've kind of warmed up to the idea of it. Um, for a variety of reasons, and and that's something that we'll be talking about in some upcoming episodes. Uh, but at this point, I am planning on it being bands one as the only special hiring rule. Uh, another thing that I have put a tremendous amount of thought and consideration into is the use of time clocks. I had the opportunity to play a single game on clock at Nova. Uh, the rest of the rounds, for you know, none of my opponents requested them. And, you know, in the one game that I did have, I actually found that it significantly increased my um, enjoyment and engagement in the game. I also had the opportunity to play six rounds on clocks plus a practice game uh, at the Lone Star Fodown. And you know what? I used to be kind of clock negative and I've really changed my tune. So after seeing the way that they played out and having a lot of conversations related to clocks, I've decided to institute some clock rules that are going to be very similar to those used in the Pacific Northwest, on the Malifaux World Series Vassal Circuit, and then also what was used at the Lone Star Fodown. Uh, I'm going to be posting finalized clock rules probably in the next week or two uh, with basically the all of the tournament packet. I am kind of giving myself the freedom to make adjustments to it right up until basically the end of December. Once the end of December rolls around, everything's going to be finalized. I don't want to be changing stuff at the last minute. So long story short, um, clocks are going to be mandatory for round one of the open tournament and the Malifaux Content Creators Invitational. 
Uh, and then they're going to be optional for any tables that do not have winning records uh, from that point forward. If if either player has a winning record at the table, then the clocks are going to be mandatory. Uh, if for whatever reason players decide that they are not going to use clocks, there will be no time. Um, there'll be no slow play or time judge calls uh, that will be allowed. Basically, the clocks are going to be used to maintain time at the event. I would strongly, strongly, strongly encourage everybody to try a game with a clock. Um, if you don't have access to one, then you could try one on Vassal or, you know, there are some other ways that you could do it as well with, via like, you know, apps on your phone or what have you. Not ideal, uh, but they can get the job done for you to get a sense of how it's going to feel. I wouldn't worry about them alienating players. Um, I've actually found in, in my experience, plus some of the other tournament organizers experience that they've actually been nothing but a net positive uh, for like 95% of players out there. Uh, if you have significant concerns about using clocks, then do feel free to get in touch with me. Um, I'm, I'm, I want to take everybody's considerations into account and I would hate to see you avoid the event because there are going to be clocks used. But I would, if you're, not on board with using clocks i would really encourage you to pay attention to your podcast feed because we actually have a phenomenal clock talk clock talk improving play episode that i just recorded yesterday uh with brian kerr from big top gaming and ambrose ingram from the pacific northwest and the malifo world series um, I'm actually going to be pushing that out next weekend as my December release instead of waiting until the middle or the end of the month to get an episode put up. Uh, I want to get it up immediately. That way folks can get, get a chance to give it a listen and kind of, you know, better inform their decision on clock usage. Long story short, I do feel like it's the right move um, really for everybody involved. Um, if, if it's the make or break for you attending the event, then please, I would encourage you to get in touch with me. Uh, but I would also strongly encourage you to keep an open mind and give it a shot. Cause I think that really, once you give them a try, there's a pretty good chance that you're going to end up really, really liking them. Uh, the other thing that I have to take into consideration coming up to this event is going to be how we handle the Ashes of Malifaux release. So obviously, you know, the Black Friday or Thanksgiving or weird birthday sale, whatever you want to call it, has come and gone. Um, at, it should be wrapping up, I think, by the end of the day today, Sunday the 26th. Uh, and we have not seen any release schedule for Ashes of Malifaux yet. Uh, as of the recording, it's not on the weird upcoming releases page. We don't know if that's going to be coming out in December or January or February or, or who knows. Um, there is going to have to be sort of a hard cap of when those models are allowed. Um, because we've only seen a couple of sneak previews and we really haven't even seen an expansive list of all of the new models that are going to be available. Um, I think that what I am going to be doing is basically saying if those uh, if that book is not out by uh, January 1st and basically in the wild ready to uh, for the community to kind of chew on and try some new models from by that first week of January, then those models are not going to be allowed at Captain Con. Uh, I do think that at least a month of time for folks to really give models a try, get proxies and conversions in order, and for the community to, you know, get a chance to sort of wrap their heads around it is important. Um, the fact of the matter is, you know, some folks, some folks may have more time than others. And if these models come out a week or two before the event, it's really not going to be fair especially for folks who, you know, might have been involved in playtesting, they're going to have a major, 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 major advantage over the rest of the community because, you know, they've had access to these models for a long period of time. And like, let's be real, there's probably going to be some folks that were involved in the playtest that are at the event, and I would hate to see it really tilt things. Uh, that said, I'm very excited for Ashes of Malifaux to come out with the, with the teases that we've seen. I think that they're going to be tremendously uh, beneficial to the game and the community um, but there's got to be a make or break point and that make or break point is going to be the first week of January so if they're available for order by the end of December uh, basically if they're oh, well, I should say if they're available for order from 
uh, weird or from local game stores by that first week of January, we'll say January 1st through January 5th, then those models will be allowed at Captain Con. If they are not, then those models will not be allowed, um, and that'll give folks more time to kind of chew on them before we see them in a, from a competitive standpoint. Uh, a couple other quick things to make mention of. Um, we, you know, I myself and some of my local uh, compatriots, some of the folks from the Danger Planet page, uh, some of my other locals, you know, Jake and Adam, even though they haven't been on the podcast lately, they've always been very supportive. Um, quite frankly, running big events like this costs a lot of money. Um, clocks, terrain, uh, mats with lines, all the stuff that people really like to see. There's a significant cash outlay for tournament organizers and other supporters that you really have to take into consideration. Um, I've been making a point to put annual investments into my tournament support kind of stable. Um, last year, I purchased a number of additional mats and I purchased some additional terrain. This year, I've got some more additional terrain that I've been working on assembling and getting prepped and ready. Um, the The big thing that is kind of looming and this is you know kind of my own doing is if we're doing mandatory clocks i need to be able to provide those so i was waiting until basically the um you know holiday weekend of thanksgiving uh to try and get the best available price on some clocks and i am pleased to say that i just made the purchase of 20 of them which should be getting delivered probably the week after next um it costs a lot of money uh, even at the cheapest available price, I mean, you're talking, you know, 15 bucks a clock times 20 clocks. So I'm going to be using any proceeds that I get from ticket sales for Captain Con to help cover the cost of, of those so that I'm not just paying for them out of my own pocket. The other thing that I'm going to be doing is any commissions earned from our weird affiliate link, which is, you know, give us your money, please and thank you. Um, you know, dot weird.com or whatever slash boring conversation. And yes, I will include the link in the show notes. Um, any commissions earned from that between now and the event are going to be going straight into event support. And that's going to be used to cover things like part of the purchase of these clocks, uh, as well as any additional terrain. I've purchased some weirdscapes terrain uh, that we're going to be using at one of the tables. I just have to work on actually getting it painted. So it's not boring gray plastic. Uh, the other thing that I've done is after much deliberation, I have decided that it's wise to begin offering a, a patron option to folks. So I did start a Patreon. Uh, actually, just this week, I uh, added a couple of different pledge levels to appeal to a number of different folks. <clears throat> uh, one of the benefits is that I, I will send out some stickers and bo some boring conversation stickers and pins to patrons uh, at the $5 USD level and above. Um, if you pledge at the next tier up, which I can't remember how much money it is, then I'll even cover the shipping internationally. Um, the shipping is covered for the lower 48 or anywhere else that has similar shipping costs for any patrons that join at the $5 level and above. If there's an, exce if there's an excess amount of shipping cost involved because of you know international, Alaska, Hawaii, or what have you, uh, then I may just ask you to chip in for uh, the cost of shipping on those. Uh, but the second or the third tier level, it'll be provided. It doesn't matter where in the world you live. Uh, and for anybody who really feels like they've got some uh, support to throw around, uh, we do have a top tier one where you'll actually be able to decide on an episode topic and potentially even guest uh, guest on that episode if you feel comfortable doing so. Um, I would encourage anybody who's interested in uh, supporting the show, even in the short term, to go on Patreon and sign up. Um, any Patreon pledges that we get between now and in the event are also going to go straight into covering the cost of these clocks and you know related event support. Um, if you, you know, even if you don't think that you can commit to a long-term, uh, Patreon contribution, and I totally respect that that's not in the cards for everybody. Uh, if you just want to join as a short, short-term supporter, you know, now through, you know, the beginning of February, that's fine. I'll, I totally understand if you have to cancel your subscription after that point. And if you're interested in doing just a one-time show of support, that's not something that Patreon uh, offers any longer, but you can certainly get in touch with me via you know, Facebook, Discord channel, what have you. 
uh, and I can share with you like a, you know, Venmo or PayPal or, or whatever you'd like. Um, so if you're more in the cards of just supporting by providing a one-time payment, or if you'd like to contribute anything that, you know, you have from your 3D printing shop or something like that, you want to send some prize support, you want to send some printed terrain for me to utilize at one of the tables, anything like that, please, please, please feel free to get in touch. Um, one last quick plug, because I was planning on this being 10 minutes, but, you know, as usual, I'm running over that amount. I'm already up to about 20 minutes. Uh, we do have some upcoming releases scheduled, and we're going to be expanding our release schedule so that we have more monthly releases, um, partially as, uh, you know, thank you for anybody who has pledged their support through the Patreon, but uh, also just because I would like to continue to put out even more content. Uh, we do have an episode where I guested on the Rage Quit Wire podcast that just actually went up yesterday where we talk about, uh, you know, basically our learnings from the Fowdown and talked a little bit more about Captain Con. Uh, we also have an improving play episode, which is, like I said, going to be coming out next week on Clock Talk. Uh, I think that that is probably one of the best episodes that we've ever recorded. And I am extremely excited to get um, feedback from the community on how it's received. Uh, I'm also going to be doing a, um, we're going to be working on a series of turn one unpack videos. Uh, I'll be recording some. I know Maeve said that um, she's interested in recording some as well. Uh, essentially, staging out a turn one on Vassal uh, or live, which I'm getting set up to be able to record soon as well, uh, to show how you manage your resources with, you know, a random hand. Um, when you should stone, when you shouldn't, what your activation should look like with a couple of specific crews. The first ones I'm going to be looking at are ones that I am, you know, very well experienced with. Those being um, Lin Lee and the Red Library keyword, Misaki and the Last Blossom keyword, Ma Tucket and the Trixie keyword, as if you needed more Trixie content after that four hour long behemoth that Sam and I just put out. But hey, it's coming to you. Um, we're also, I'm going to be targeting about one monthly full length pod release, uh, kind of like we have been for, you know, the last couple of years. And then I'm also going to be shooting for one additional video episode minimum per month. Uh, and then occasional, you know, live stream games or recorded games that get posted in addition to that. Um, so I am looking at increasing the pace of content release, and I hope that you guys all enjoy what we have to bring to the table. So with all that, I, you know, just one final plea to anybody who is planning on attending Captain Con, please consider purchasing your badge and registering for the Booty and Plunder event before the end of this week. Um, cutoff for that should be Saturday, December 2nd. So thank you very much for tuning in. If you've stuck around for this 20-ish minutes or so of me just droning on about how I need your money and <laughs> um, the kind of things that go into supporting a successful event. Uh, I hope that you've all enjoyed this very brief kind of interstitial episode, and I look forward to providing even more content to you as we go on. So thank you again. As always, keep your conversations boring and stay weird, folks. Mm -hmm.